Hey guys, Shane here. So in this video, we're going to be painting and weathering Tamiya's 135th Schwimmwagen. So we're going to be doing almost like a painting figure tutorial style format, but this time we're going to be doing the painting and weathering of a small vehicle. So I'm going to take you through every step and uh, hopefully you'll find this interesting. So first things first, I'm going to break down the kit into its sub-assembly. So I have a full beginner's tutorial on how I build kits, which explains how I go about my sub-assemblies. So I've just uh, tacked all this together with blue tack, and this is going to allow me to break all these down into smaller pieces for ease of painting and weathering. Then optional step, I'm going to add a layer of primer. In this case, I'm going to use Tamiya's Fine Surface Primer. This is optional. You don't have to prime if you don't want to. I'd always recommend yet you do. It just gives a very clean and even surface to layer paints on. So I often get asked in many of my videos, how do I mount my models for painting? And this is how I really do. I just use a bit of poster tack or blue tack here. And I just start mounting it onto, um, I could just take an old bottle. And then for the smaller parts, I just take some cocktail sticks, a bit of blue tack, and then just start uh, tacking them on. For some of the more awkward parts, I'll just use a bit of super glue and uh, glue them on. So for the seats, I just snip off the tops of the cocktail sticks to make them flat and then tack it on with a little bit of gel tight super glue. And this will just give us a clean break and I glue them naturally on the parts that are going to be hidden once glued in place. So everything's prepared, now we can start painting. So for the basic Dunkel Gelb that we're going to be going for, I'm going to take some FX60 and FX79. Uh, I'm going to mix them up roughly 60% FX60 dark yellow to the deck tan and this is going to give us a kind of a, a sandy brown color which is going to be our base color for the Dunkel Gelb. Now this isn't meant to simulate the red oxide primer that many German vehicles had. This is more to add like a shadow layer. So I set my airbrush compressor to about 15 psi and I'm using a 0.2 needle. Uh, the airbrush I'm using is a harder and Steenbeck Volution CR Plus and I'm just laying down really small amounts of paint in 10 coats. Now this took a few light layers to build up so I'm just trying to be patient and not swamp the model as it is quite easy to lay a lot of paint with Tamiya colours if you're not careful so I'm just going to slowly build this up. So just to add a bit more shade, I'm just going to take the XF79 on its own and then just spray it into some of the more deeper recesses, just to add a bit more contrast. Again, this is an optional layer, but uh, I always find it's just better to add a little bit more shade. Just to, it just gives us more to work with when we start adding our, our more traditional dark yellow coat on top of it. So now moving on to our Dunkel Gelb proper, so now we're going to take some Tamiya XF 
55 deck tan and our dark yellow and again we're going to mix it about 70% of the dark yellow to 30% x55 again I'm just mixing up my paint quite well here just going to decant it into a plastic shot glass I find it very easy just to use a smaller container for my mixing and tinning it's just easier to keep an eye on the levels of paint to tinner ratio Now this isn't necessarily the most accurate Dunkel Gelb colour out there. I'm not a big stickler for you no know, colour matching entirely as long as it's close enough for me. Um, it's it's good enough for me. That's just my level of, of standard. Um, you can go really down the rabbit hole with this to get the perfect match. However, this is very much based on how Rinaldi does his Dunkel Gelbs and like, he gets a lovely end effect. So it's kind of very much inspired by his work. So normally what I'll just do here then is just take a small piece of kitchen uh, roll or paper towel and just do a little bit of squiggle lines to see how thin and how well it sprays. The paint is quite transparent and that allows us to mess around with the levels. If you want to have a lot of this darker um, sandy color showing through or dark brown showing through uh, just uh, by just doing a really thin you can have a lot of it going through so I'm going to start slowly start building up this layer so I can regulate how intense our shadow layer is going to be Now that we're adding a little bit of a highlight, we're going to take some more of the XF55 deck tan and I'm going to mix that into our, our, our mixture and I'm going to start focusing this paint on top of certain details. So this is a slightly more bleached dark yellow. So I'm going to be a little bit careful with this, I don't want to totally undo the preceding layers that we've done. I'm just going to focus it on the tops of details. So now with all that dry we're going to add a glaze of X24 clear yellow and this is going to be a means to unify our various colours. So it's going to really heavily thin this down, it's probably about 80% to 90% thinner to paint. And I'm just going to very gently glaze this on the entire model and this is just going to re-establish the yellow U as well as bring all these different colours, these different shades and highlights all together.
Now we're going to move on to adding some more details. We're going to take some Fleo model color Raki sand. And we're going to use this to paint in some of the wooden details. So let's go and take a very fine tip brush. I think this is a double zero Windsor Newtman Cotman. I'm going to tin down some paint onto my palette and just slowly start painting this in. Again, this is a little bit delicate. It's not too bad. It's um, not as awkward as I thought it was going to be. I'm also going to use that colour to do the oar and the handle for the shovel too, just in case I forget to fill them that. Now to do some of the metallics or uh, some of the metal details, we're just going to take some Flejo model colour, German black brown. And we're going to start painting some of the really delicate details here, such as the um, control rod for lowering and raising the propeller shaft, as well as the exhaust muffler located underneath it. I'm also going to pick out the head of the shovel with this colour. You can see I kind of do this in small little sections, I don't try to do it all in one go. And then so I don't paint onto the dark yellow, I just uh, slide a piece of paper, the, uh, the rod here on the top of the exhaust unit, so I don't get any over, uh, over spill onto the dark yellow. So this step took me a long time, so that's why I'm kind of focusing quite a bit on it. But I think it's just a good example of how to go about detail painting on, on a model, especially when you've already fixed those details in place. So now to do some of the uh, leather and some of the um, rubber details, we're going to take some Flavo model layer Panzer Grey. You could also just use a standard model colour um, German Grey if you had this. I just had, had this colour at hand. And I'm going to slowly start cutting in these details on the uh, control panel here on the dashboard. I'm also going to use this color to paint in the leather on the seats as well as the uh, rubber of the tires. And with the seats, I'm just going to be kind of careful to keep it in the uh, within the cushion, if you like. I don't want to get too much overspray here or overspill. And if I do, I just try to uh, wipe it off as quick as I can before the paint can set. So uh, again, just being careful, a little bit of brush control here, which we'll just uh, avoid a lot of trouble later on.
Now moving on some more to tires. So what I find for painting tires, quick easy way of doing it, is just to paint the area around the hub first. So just to get that nice um, clean circle and then start painting the rest of the tire. So I'll always try to focus around that first. And I don't try to do it in one go, it's just small little brush actions at a time. Now it's going to take some Flejo model color German Fiegel Grey. I'm going to tin it down slightly and then I'm going to start using it to paint in the uh, detail for the canvas um, top cover. So again, I'm not going to be too precious about this. I'm just going to use some basic wash techniques just to make this interesting later on in the video. So I'm just going to just lay this down moderately heavily I'm not I'm not going to be too delicate with it obviously I don't want the swamp these small fold details here with paint Then I'm going to take some Phileo Model Air Steel, it's one of my favourite colours to use. And I tend to use this actually for painting mirrors. So again, this is straight out of the bottle, it's already pre-tinned so I don't have to tin it down. And I'm just going to be very careful and cut this into the rear view mirror of our shroom fog in here. Now I'm just going to take some uh, Model Air flat black. Again, you could just use any flat black, whether it be a model cutter or any other range. I just had, again, happen to have this at hand. And I'm just going to paint the top of the gear shift and the various other little um, uh, gear sticks here. I'm also going to take a little bit of metallic black, I believe, from Phileo, and I'm just going to paint in the uh, clutch and accelerator here. So again, this was a little bit awkward, but uh, kind of just a, by just taking my time and using a small tip brush, it's fine. So now I'm going to add a layer of gloss varnish. For this one, I use Phileo's premium gloss varnish and some airbrush thinner. Now I've turned the PSI up to about maybe 25 PSI because I found that Flejo varnishes tend to like being sprayed at relatively high pressures. So I'm just going to do short blast to build up the gloss varnish here. And this is going to be the base layer to which we're going to weather on top of. Now I did originally film putting the decals down or decals down. However, they all flaked off for whatever reason. I guess uh, it's my first time ever having problems with uh, Tamiya decals but their reputation this time did prove to be true, that they were a bit finicky.
So the gloss has been allowed to dry for 24 hours and now we're going to move on to our modeler's oils. So we're going to be using mostly 502 Octylon um, modeler's oil paints which are fantastic. We're also going to be using a few other artist oils as well. So we're going to prepare the surface by just moistening it with a bit of uh, white spirit or mineral spirits. And now I'm just going to take a few dots of flat white or titanium white if you're using artist's oils and we're going to start laying down a dot filter. I'm also going to take a little bit of ochre or yellow ochre. Put our colours in if you want to use something like greens or yellows as well. It's up to you. I put a bit of blue into it. And then I'm just going to take um, a clean brush, which is a nice soft white bristle brush here that's been dipped in a little bit of spirits and I'm going to start pulling in one direction. And these are going to create some very nice um, atmospheric effects like rain streaks and uh, a little bit of bleaching. And again, I just start working in sections. I just do a panel at a time, if you like, and just like dot in the various colors. Again, you can go as mad as you want with these colors or as um, conservative as you want. It's up to yourself. Um, I always do try to make sure that I put a lot of white into the dot filter. It just adds a nice little bit of uh, sun bleaching and rain streaks, I find. So when it does go down on the first, it can be quite garish. However, once we start blending it back with a clean brush, it really begins to knock that um, intensity back. And it just gives a very subtle effect. Again, we want this just to be really barely visible to get the uh, desired end result. So again, I'm just trying to blend this back slowly but surely. And I kind of take my time about it, you know, I, I um, I do a bit at a time, kind of have a look at it, see how I feel about it, and then I go back and blend it back more if I need to. Oil paints are probably one of the most uh, forgiving of mediums that a modeler can work with. I, this stuff is immensely forgiving. So now I'm going to take some Phileo Panzerases um, Highlight Africa Tanker colour. And this is going to be our base color for adding some chipping. I'm just going to take a little piece of uh, foam here, a little jagged piece, and then I'm going to start steepling this onto some of the leading edges of our of our Schoenfalg in here. Now, I'm not going to go too crazy adding chips to this. It's really up to you how far you want to go. But the, uh, the first layer of chipping should always be a lighter color to the base coat. So again, I'm just using a Panzerasis color here. That's like a really light sandy yellow. This is up to you. You can use any color you want really, as long as it's a lighter yellow than the uh, color that you're putting it on top of. So now to add some deeper chips, we're going back to our German Camo Black Brown. And I'm switching down to a very fine tip brush. And within the areas that we've laid the lighter chips into, I'm going to paint in some of these uh, darker areas to show some of the bare metal showing through. Again, you don't have to do this, do this in every area that you chipped, but some of the leading edges that you feel would have got even more wear. Um, it's a good way just to add a little bit more visual um, interest.
So you'll notice in the last few clips, there's times you can see the decal or decal of the license plate and now it's gone. So this is the, the around the time when all the decals are falling off the model. Even though I did use setting solutions, I did try to gloss the coat them in, which just weren't having it. So uh, I kind of gave up and just scraped them all off. So So now moving on to our Dunkle Gale proper. So now we're so now we're going to take some of our 502 Octylong Shadow Brown. I'm going to take some artist's um, white spirit here. I don't use the stuff you'll find in the DIY shop. So don't use home supply level white spirit. It's just too intense. Buy a big can of artist's um, white spirit. It can be a little bit expensive. You can buy a big one liter um, can of it for like 10 euro and I'll, I've literally been using that for two years now and I still haven't even gotten a quarter of the way through it and I'm going to heavily thin it down and I'm going to make this into uh, our panel wash here so what I'll do is I just lay a little bit of white spirit onto the area I want to lay the wash into and then I start pin washing it in using capillary action So I'm really just going to focus this into areas I want to frame it essentially. So the idea here is that if there's uh, a panel line or raised detail, I'm going to flow this wash into it. And this also simulates grime building up in these details as well. So again, I just prepared the area with a little bit of white spirit, just a brush moistened in it. And then I'll flow my wash over that. And it just helps break the surface tension as well as the gloss will do this as well. And then the capillary action of that um, raised or sunken detail will pull the wash where we want it to go. And you'll see me coming back and forth too with a, a cotton swab or a q-tip just to remove any excess I don't want. And I'm just literally just applying this to areas that have some uh, facility of detail just to frame that. And we can slowly start seeing our, our Schoenfagen coming to life now. Like this is I don't know, this is the part I actually really wait for and I look forward to when I'm working on a project is once I can start doing our oil work because I find that's one, you're near the end of the project and two, it's, it, it can kind of see, it all seems to come together at this moment really, you know. Now I'm going to just add some of this wash onto uh, the fender detail here again just to frame this detail and make it stand out. I'm not a bit, I hate working with wheels and tracks and, and road wheels on tanks. It's my least favorite part of um, 
any of my fecal projects so I tend just to come up with expedient ways to blast through them and still get nice results. So now I'm going to take some artist's raw umber paint and I'm slowly going to start painting it onto our wooden details. Now I've tinted it with a tiny tiny little amount of white spirit but this is really coming out of the tube. This is not a wash um, this is coming straight out of the tube and I'm just going to paint it thinly onto our uh, shuffle handle here, uh, the rowing oar here, as well as the floor of the uh, crew compartment. And this is going to give us a really nice kind of wood effect and wood grain effect. So you can see me here, I'm just pulling the paint really in one direction just to kind of create um, a simple wood grain. And any place I kind of get the paint where I don't want, I just wipe it away there with a clean brush. So what I'll normally do is I'll put down a small amount of paint, come back with a brush that's you know, kind of clean and has got a little bit of white spirit on it, and then start pulling it in one direction, and that's kind of creates this nice wood effect and you can still see that the Iraqi sand that we laid as a base coat for our wood effects is still showing through quite prominently. Now I'm going to take some 502 Octylon light rust oil paint and I'm going to start stippling it onto the exhaust muffler. And we're going to do a very kind of light rusty effect here. So again, this paint is really mostly out of the tube, but it's just a tiny amount of paint on the brush. And then I'll come in with a tiny amount of white spirit once I've stippled it on. And I'll start working it into the muffler to create... Um, kind of like a mottled rust effect. So I cleaned off my brush, there's a little bit of white spirit on dipped in this brush, not a lot, just, just slightly moistened with it. And I'm going to start stippling it. And I'm just going to try to blend it out and feather it out to make it a little bit more uniform and let you blast blotchy. I know it's not necessarily how rust in nature works, however, if you try to make it just too irregular and too blotchy and it just becomes an eyesore so there is like a level of balance that you have to achieve while still trying to make it look like it's um, natural it's kind of one of the paradoxes of modeling so now just to add a little bit of dust effects so i'm going to take some tamiya fx 57 buff now I tend to use Faleo colors for this, but this time I'm going to try it with buff, because that's kind of the classic color. I'm going to heavily tint it. This is about 90% tint, 90% uh, tinner to 10% paint. And my PSI is about maybe 10 PSI on my airbrush. And I'm going to slowly just apply this dust layer to the uh, bottom section of the uh, shroom fog in here. And then to add some pigments, I was I was given some uh, samples here from Pan Pastel. Uh, they do full ranges of both artists' um, uh, pigments here, and they also do um, a modeling range. So either they very kindly sent me some samples to uh, try out. So we're going to give it a go and see what we can get uh, to get some pigment effects. So you get these very nice big sets, got a lot of kind of primary colors and natural colors in, so you can kind of mix up your own pigment out of them as well as some very nice little applicators. So we have some various different uh, scale modeling sets here. 
and uh, let's see what we can get. So we're going to kind of lay this down in a very traditional scale modeling uh, manner because these come kind of uh, compacted. Uh, so they're not like loose dust that we're used to. So you do have to kind of ground them down like you would like a normal pastel. So I'm just going to take a, a hobby blade here and I'm just going to grind just the top layer just to create some weathering pigment. Took some normal colors here. These are all of the umbers and um, some of the ochres. And just by taking a, a normal type of very soft uh, bristle brush here, I'm just going to start stippling this onto my tires. Again, I'm just loading it on. I'm not really being too uh, too too um, cautious about it. Just hammer it in there. And then what I'll normally do then is I'll uh, come in with a cotton swab once I'm happy and then remove some of the excess. I'm also just going to apply the ochre color which is to kind of simulate some light dust. So what, how I normally do pigments is I'll go from dark to light just like I do with anything else. And then just to act as a, a pigment fixer I'm just going to take some Tamiya X20 thinner and then just flow it into some of the areas. You don't necessarily have to do it this way. I find that the pigment actually stays down quite well but you will have to seal it with a gloss coat once you're happy with it. Then I'm just going to come in here with a Q-tip, going to remove some of the excess, um, especially around the uh, center of the tires and the treads, just to keep the uh, pigment inside the, the treads. And there you go, you get a very nice actually end result. Now you can see this was kind of messy, yeah, there, there was a, a lot of loose pigment, but that's just the way it goes. And that's probably down to me more than the product, because I am quite a messy person. And again, I'm just blasting this in. Uh, since this is a spare tire, I'm not going to put any of the mud into it, it's just going to be the dust which is the uh, ochre color here. And again, just using a Q-tip just to wipe away the excess, just to kind of get a, a free light dusting. So it's actually going down quite well. Um, I'm not really actually that used to using pigments. I tend to use more um, acrylic paints and uh, oil paints to create weathering. So I, I was kind of very curious to see what I could get out of them. And so far, it's, they're actually doing quite well. So once we're done with our, our um, pigments, I'm just going to take some matte varnish and we're going to steal the entire model. So this matte varnish is from Filejo's premium range. So I would recommend if you're going to be using the Filejo varnishes, use their premium range. So we're just going to seal in our pigment work here just with a bit of matte varnish just to lock everything in as well as uh, all the various other different sub assemblies. So you can see the canvas work. So what I did there was I just laid some Citadel Agrit Earthshade once I painted it, and then I put some of that uh, X5 or X55 buff sprayed over it, and that got me a nice little end effect. Didn't really spend any time on it. But now with the furnish allowed to fully dry, so I left it for about 24 hours. Now we're going to start assembling our model. And then just to add a little bit of um, interest, I added a little bit of Scenic Factory's um, pine leaves here. Just to add a little bit of foliage camouflage, just to break things up a little bit. 
Now I'm, I'm putting down these loose, but you could just put little bits of, um, even just use something like uh, a little bit of matte varnish to actually lock these in. But again, I'm just always wanted to see what these would look like on a vehicle, and I think the swim wagon really like suits having a little bit of uh, foliage camouflage like you'd see in Normandy or what have you. So with her lovely garnish applied, just to bring it all together, uh, our little project here is finished. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed this. This is a little bit different to how I do my fecal stuff, but I was kind of thinking if I took a small fake like a Jeep or something and painted and did a, a figure painting format, maybe it would be a little bit interesting. So do tell me what you thought about this video. I really hope uh, it was at least enjoyable, even though a little bit long. Uh, again guys I want to thank you all for your support and uh, your patience I know I haven't really been publishing a lot of videos of late just between work and college I just haven't had as much time but don't worry I'm still working on projects in the background again I'd like to say a big thank you to all my patrons whose support allowed me to make these videos so again big thank you to you all guys and if you guys would like to support the channel and help me keep doing what we do uh, do support or do consider at least uh, join Patreon so thank you very much guys I'll catch you the next video I have been Shane and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.